everyone safe? Mm -hmm. So just a few more minutes. Hello. Thank you everyone for joining. I know you're quite busy. I hope everyone is safe. Ours, it's two minutes. I think we can can proceed. Okay, cool. Yes. So currently we have 84. So thank you again, everyone. Uh, before we start, I just wanted to run by you the house rules. Um, for this webinar, you guys are in listen-only mode. So you can't, we can't hear you, but of course you can hear us. So please don't be shy. There is a Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. So you can ask anything. Uh, if you want to ask anything for Aris, just please don't be shy, ask anything you want. Um, we are also working from home. So I just wanted to set uh, the mood. Um, we're not in a professional quote unquote environment. So we're still also at home. So if you hear barking in the background, Aris has puppies, I have chickens. <laughs> If you hear that, sorry about that, but um, please bear with us. And for this session, we will be recording this. So if you have colleagues that are coming in late, it's fine. If, if at any point your internet connection gets disabled or something, um, please don't worry, because we will be giving you a copy of the webinar after this. And then please, please share this. Um, this is one of the, uh, we want to ramp this up. We're, producing more webinars, so we want to be all over social media. So if you can talk about it, put the hashtags, um, build your talent pipeline, and talk push it real good. And of course, we want you guys to enjoy. So sit back, relax, and um, there's a Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. After this, we will be having a Q&A session with Aris, so we will be addressing everything. So if you heard the chickens, that's the chickens, yeah. Mm -hmm. So for today, we have Aris, our customer success director. Um, next slide, please. Okay. Okay. Thanks for the introduction, Blanche. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us. This is our first webinar um, here in the Philippines. And I'm, I'm actually very excited to speak to all of you this afternoon uh, to share the best practices around our topic which is building your talent pool from home. Now, like I said, this is the first time that we are sharing our expertise on the topic um, in a webinar format because more, mostly we're doing this in person with our customers. Um, but thank you, thank you for joining, joining this webinar. Um, in such short notice, actually, we just started um, announcing the, the news about the webinar about late last week. So thank you, thank you for coming in today. Um, I'm not able to see the chat as fast as I could because I'm on my screen on the slides, but definitely if you have questions towards the end, uh, we will go over all of those questions and we will try to answer all of those as much as we can. Now, uh, most of the things that we will be discussing in the call today would be coming from our experiences across several customers in the region, as well as personal experiences that I've accumulated from my professional experience. But just to give a very quick background of, uh, about myself, um, I have been with TalkPush for more than four years now. I'm leading the customer success function here in the region. And the main goal of my team is to help our customers succeed in accelerating their recruitment processes with the use of TalkPush. Now, recruitment is a topic that's, you know, that's it's very close to my heart, uh, mainly because uh, the first job uh, that I had after graduation is that of a recruitment associate for a BPO company. Now, you may see the difference between my hairline then and now, uh, but that's how I started before. Um, I had a very illuminating um, experience back then because I was doing hundreds of minutes, hundreds of minutes of phone time with candidates. Um, and my main goal at the time as, as an associate is basically to invite the pre-screen candidates and to invite them into our office for the next steps. Now that's how I started. I then specialized into various areas of human resources, eventually leading my own HR team. And then right now I am, I have landed this role in TalkPush where I'm leading the customer success function in the region. Um, that being said, um, believe me when I say that, you know, I understand the complexity of running recruitment operations. 
And I, one of my previous bosses told me that it's important that you share the pain and experience the pain yourself so that you could relate with people that you work with. And you know, that's exactly the purpose of our discussion today. We want to talk about how do we build your talent pool from home? Now, <clears throat> I have a couple of slides to guide us through the entire discussion. And as mentioned by Blanche earlier, I encourage everyone to participate and ask questions. Um, the experience, yes, the experience is not the same compared to doing this discussion face to face, but please utilize the chat function. Blanche is also, will also be coming in at certain parts of the conversation if there's an urgent question that needs to be answered. Uh, we will do that. At the same time, we will reserve some time for Q&A, so please use the Q&A button um, if you want to raise a question. Um, at the end of this discussion, um, our overall objective is for all of you to be able to take away actionable recommendations, which you can easily implement in your respective teams. Now, I understand that the audience here may be a mix of recruiters, maybe there's a bit of HR people in the audience, um, and then there may be some digital marketers that are also, um, that are also in, the, in the webinar. Um, some of you may already be using our platform, TalkPush, and some of you may not be using it. Um, but before that, quick shout out to all of the talk, talk pushers who are in this webinar. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for, thank you for your support. But again, regardless if you're a customer of talk push or you're not, I assure you that the topics that I will go through this afternoon should be relevant to your team. All right, so let's get started. Okay, let's just, right, I'm sure if, if you're seeing the video on your screen right now, um, I'm sure some of you have seen this video playing on in Facebook on social media. And these are just footages put together but then by an amazing visual artist named Weir Ascabano, uh, which, basically, which is basically showing how Makati City looks like these days. And, and probably for other countries, this is, situation may be the same where you, know, you have empty streets, it's almost eerily quiet, which only happens in certain days of the year. For example, in the Philippines, like during Christmas Day or New Year's Day, that's how it is in the streets, but not on a normal day. Um, one example also would be whenever Manny Pacquiao back in the days has a match, people would normally be inside their homes, hooked to their TV, so the streets would be empty. But right now, this is the new wage. Uh, this is the new normal. Um, and we in Luzon, actually, we're already on our 25th day of our enhanced community quarantine. And personally, personally, I have only been out of my place once since this started. Um, and I'm not sure about you. How long you have been out of your place for maybe a couple of times? You're lucky if you, you've been outside, but I'd rather stay inside just because of, you know, because we want to distance ourselves um, and just to stay safe. Um, yeah, and yesterday it was officially confirmed that the lockdown is further extended until the end of April. Now, in our company, we're very fortunate in TalkWish because the nature of our work and our services allow us to, you know, to be nimble and flexible. And it doesn't, TalkWish doesn't really require us to be working in our office, in our physical office the entire time. But I understand that, you know, there's still that element that you're still missing out when you do things virtually. And everyone has different ways on how you cope to that kind of situation. Now, this is, you know, this is just a comical depiction of how many of us, not just me, but maybe, maybe most of you can relate as well as to how you were before the lockdown or before the entire COVID-19 started and how you are now at, um, in this kind of situation. Um, tell me, whom, whom among you can relate to, to any of these people at this point? Are you, are you like Pope Francis on the left or are you the one on the right? I think there are a couple of responses on the chat. Let me just quickly view it. Right, okay, someone says they're on the right. Someone says they gained weight during the, during, the, during the lockdown. Right, okay. Yeah, I mean, what I'm trying to say here is before the lockdown, we're like Pope Francis on the left, very clean. Maybe we're always presentable, almost prim and proper the entire time. And, you know, always looking at, after how we dress up and how we show up in the office for the day. But during the lockdown, it's a completely different story. Um, some, some of you may have said that, you know, they can absolutely relate to the person on the right. By, by, by the way, if you're not familiar with this guy on the right, that's actually a fictional character. Um, he's called the High Sparrow, and 
this is a character from the HBO series Game of Thrones. Now, if you look at him, maybe you would say that you would say that he's very relaxed for a lack for lack of a better term, but almost shabby looking without the care in the world in how you know in how he looks. You know, but um, right now for most of us, our office is now just a few steps away from our bed. Right now I'm I'm here doing this webinar inside my bedroom. My bed is just actually right beside me. Um, and maybe some of us may be working from our own beds. Raise up your raise your hand if you're you know if you're if you're doing emails, if, if you are <laughs> okay, there's a couple of hands there. If you're working from your bed, um, right. But this is the reality now. The, this paradigm shift has always been a totally different experience for many of us. Um, and it may be temporary, but like or like what I was saying earlier, this can now be the new normal. And that means that we need to adjust to the changing time if we want to stay relevant. Now Working at home means, you know, you're very close to your loved ones. In fact, I'm sure that many of you would agree that this is the only time since a very long while that we're actually spending the longest time inside our home, right? Before, before the lockdown, probably we were spending two thirds of our day outside our home. That's commuting to the office, actually spending time in the office. Um, but now here we are inside our homes day in, day out. But working from home also means that, you know, there can be a lot of distract distractions which we need to manage. It could be your kid popping in during one of your conference calls, like what you can see on the GIF on the screen right now. Or in my case, it could be my puppy barking during times when I'm in a very important meeting, um, like or Blanche's chickens uh, while she's doing a webinar. But those things need to be managed if you really want to be productive in this setup. Um, and this is also me managing your expectations, but like what Blanche told you earlier, if, if in any case during the, you know, the, the course of this webinar, my dog decides to grab her attention, he's bear with me. Um, she's just like that. Anyway, that being said, the entire experience is, I would say, it's uncharted territory for most of us. But obviously, we all need, we all need to keep up and stay productive because obviously our numbers our targets, your hiring goals, if you're a recruiter, your KPIs, your, your OKRs, they're not gonna change during this time. It's there. So it's, it's really on us to, to step up our game and to adapt to this new environment. Before I move on to, you know, to, the, to the recruitment, you know, localizing the discussion on recruitment, just a, just a couple of work from home tips um, that I'd like to share with you. First, obviously, set aside a designated work area where you could get in the zone. It could be, you know, like this space of my room where you know, it's not my bed, but I'm here in, in, in this area where I have a desk where I could, I could get in the zone and I could, you know, be in work mode. Uh, at the same time, you could try to avoid as many distractions as possible. So for example, if you're living with your siblings, then maybe it makes sense that you tell them, hey, during these times, I'll be in a call, please turn down the volume or maybe don't, don't, don't be too loud. Um, at the same time, in reference to the first bullet, it's important that you set up your own tools because right now, since we are very distributed, it's important that you are connected. For example, you, you need to be connected using a reliable internet connection. Um, maybe not of all of us may have the luxury of having a very fast internet connection, especially in the Philippines. It's not always the case, but you know, I've seen some of my team members who are getting you know prepaid services to get you know probably portable home Wi-Fi services that you can just use for yourself. And that way you don't share the connection with, um, with you know, with some people or inside your home. But if, if that's not possible, then obviously you can always talk to your siblings or parents and say, hey, can you just not download torrents while I'm working or, 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 or do all of those video stuff um, later in the day, but not during I'm working. And, and obviously, um, last but not least, um, plan your day know when to start and know when to stop. Um, the difference between working from home versus working in the office is when you're in the office, then you know that you know, there's a time for lunch breaks because people would tell you, hey, let's go out for lunch or let's go out for coffee. Or if it's already dark outside, people will start coming out and you know, coming, coming back home. But when you're at home, obviously, you, there's, nothing like, there's nothing like that. So put everything in your calendar, even your lunch break, even, even your coffee breaks even your snack breaks, put it in your calendar so you don't forget about it. 
Um, and then obviously, um, it's important that you have this mindset of what your regular hours are, um, because you, you don't want to be working the entire day. You you you're there in your home, but obviously you need to spend time with your family. I miss the port bullet which says "dress to impress," even if it's just for your pet. Um, like you know, you don't have to wear like corporate cold clothes, but you can wear smart casual, and it also helps you get in the zone. If you're wearing your pajamas or maybe wearing the shirt that you've been wearing for the last two days, I'm not sure if anyone of you're doing that. Maybe I've done that once. But you know, it's important that you try to take a shower at the start of the day, dress like you know, dress in comfortable clothes. And that gives you, you know, it, get, it puts you in the mood that, you know, I'm going to be productive. I'm, you know, it, it gets you in the zone. All right? Okay, so now let's talk about the meat of the presentation. What about recruitment? What is the new business normal? Um, I told you in the beginning of the, of the webinar that <clears throat> my role in Talk Push is to help our customers build candidate journeys and recruitment workflows where they can leverage on our technology to automate most of the administrative tasks. Um, but you know, most of those workflows that we've created for our customers back then um, are, you know, are based on the assumption that hiring is being done on site. So it starts with the digital process, but then they need to convert people to come to the office. But that's not the case anymore, as I'm sure every one of you would agree. This new business normal has forced everyone is doing recruitment to focus on 100% digital and virtual experiences, you know, to carry out their recruitment function. Now, maybe some of you might say, or oh, our company is already slowing down, we're not hiring as much. But, you know, I, I'm sure everyone would, would agree that hiring is still ongoing. Um, there is, a, uh, in late February, there's a study that was published by Glassdoor uh, which is, as you can see on your screen right now, there's just a very modest decline um, in business outlook um, and hiring trend in countries that are affected by COVID-19. Well, it may be too early to generalize the trend, but you know, it, it's just a validation that hiring may be slowing down, but it doesn't mean that it's going to stop and it doesn't mean that it's going to come back up in the coming weeks. Now, what, what does that mean in terms of generating candidate traffic? Um, based from what we've seen, we will serve in the past three weeks that the behavior of candidates has changed during the crisis. For example, one of the most remarkable changes is that um, before, normally candidates would look at tangible motivations when they search for a job. Examples of those could be like high salaries, signing bonuses or company benefits or company, even company facilities among others. But now um, we've seen that there are observations from recruiters that candidates are being more critical with the companies that are advertising job positions. Um, you know, the tangible motivations like salary are important, of course, but you know, candidates are starting to ask questions like, is the company stable? How did the company react to the COVID-19 situation? Is this company helping their employees during the lockdown? Questions like that. And what, what does that mean? It means that candidates now are looking for indicators that a company has empathy towards its people. Um, and therefore, recruiters need to work on building those relationships with their candidates, as opposed to looking at recruitment as a transactional experience. I say transactional because you know, when I was a phone screener, my only goal is to get people on site. Call. It's, 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 you know, it's calls upon calls upon calls every day. Uh, but right now, building relationships with candidates and making the candidates feel that, they, that they're important is very much important these days, more than ever. And that responsibility, obviously, that falls in the hands of the recruiter. Now, big companies like the ones that you're seeing on the screen right now, have, they, they, they heeded the call for support as a response to the crisis, like probably donating funds for their employees or reallocating budgets um, for corporate social responsibility, among others. And I understand that the situation may be different from one company to another. You know, maybe these big companies may have, they have a lot of budget to, to, to move and reallocate. But the message that I want to highlight here, it's, it goes back to what I said a while ago, where candidates are more socially aware now more than ever. Uh, and simply because they're experiencing the challenges themselves. They are in the lockdown. 
we are seeing examples of how layoffs are happening and how companies are responding to the situation. So it's important for them to understand what really what what does what do companies really do to help their companies and to help you know to help the, the situation as a whole. Now if if there's anyone here in the webinar who's doing recruitment marketing, um, maybe this would be helpful for you. We've seen based on studies that that's done by social bakers, I'll I'll, I'll share the, the link is actually on the screen and we'll share it with everyone. It's it's telling us that there's a changing landscape where People now, obviously, people are staying at home and they have plenty of time to consume content online. Um, and we're even seeing that um, the people are consuming more digital content, organic content, compared to paid content right now. Um, and that, because of that, um, the, the, the cost of ads are cheaper now. They are 50% cheaper compared to where it was seven months ago. And people are engaging more with organic content compared to paid posts. So that means that you know when you post something on social media, um, you understand that candidates are looking for content that are sincere and well thought of, um, as opposed to casting a wide net of paid ads, you know, to generate leads. Um, topics that would be relevant for you would be around corporate culture, promoting your work work from home strategies. If you have that, um, you could also put some content around how do you take care of your employees during this situation among others and that would be very very relevant to your candidate audience so the audience that you're trying to reach okay now because of all of these changes one might ask um, did the candidate volume change after the lockdown did candidates stop applying did the behavior change when we looked at the volume of candidates that are coming into talk push before the enhanced community quarantine and after we've actually seen that there's a steady increase in candidate applications as they're seeing in the screen right now this is just an indicator that while candidate expectations may have changed you know they're very critical they're very socially aware um it's this is also an indicator that the job market is very much active and ongoing um these days on the slide right now, you are seeing the daytime distribution of candidate conversations that are recorded on Talk Push during the lockdown. Um, when we look at the distribution of, of conversations that our chatbots are doing, we have seen that the candidate activity is actually sustained um, that, to the entire day. So if you notice, it starts at around 9 a.m. Um, and it's sustained until around 11 p.m. every day. Um, if you're going to ask me, how does this look like? before the lockdown, normally the behavior starts to diminish after 8 p.m. But that's not the case anymore. It starts very early and it's sustained until, until very late in the evening. Um, for most of our customers, our chatbots are working around the clock for them. Um, so what you can see on the screen right now are just some of the avatars of the chatbots that we've deployed to our customers globally each having their own personality and are able to automate you know, up to 90% of the manual work done by recruiters in the sourcing and interviewing process. Um, we've actually heard a lot of good feedback from, from a user saying that the chatbots are really helping them cover as much this, these days. Um, if we, we actually had um, statistics, um, I, I'm not able to share it on the screen, but um, the number of users on Talkwash actually doubled. Um, after the lockdown and that means that many many recruiters are really leveraging on technology to capture the audience um, or capture the candidate market that's, that's coming to them um, i've included qr codes on the screen so for some of you who might be interested to experience how our chatbots look, look like um, please feel free to scan the codes the one on the left would be a code that will lead you to our messenger chatbot uh, which is very popular in the philippines um, well, the one on the right would be for WhatsApp, um, which is very popular for, um, for other markets like in Latin America, in the US, and Hong Kong. <clears throat> um, our chatbots are also helping us manage the crisis. You can see the avatar here of our Stanley chatbot with, with a face mask. Um, and, and, and really, because the chatbots are the extension of our customers' recruitment teams, the chatbots are also helping in terms of managing candidate expectations, 
educating them how each of these companies are responding to the COVID situation, how is the hiring like now um, because of the, of the entire situation. Okay. Um, right. Thanks, Duty. Um, okay. So now I'm going to talk about you know, what, how, how did the sourcing and interviewing tactics change after the lockdown? This is a picture of a job fair. This is actually an Independence Day, Independence Day job fair, if I'm not mistaken. This was in Glorietta, um, in Makati. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but before, before the lockdown, companies are obviously tapping all sorts of sourcing channels. It, should, it may be online or job fairs, caravans. Um, you know, all of those are being activated. And the main the main goal of recruiters is to push for physical interview. So you always have a very active recruitment center and on-site hiring is being done um, across the board. But obviously, we can't do that now in light of social distancing. But sourcing has now shifted entirely to social media. So we were seeing on Talk Push that the main channels that are really driving those volumes are job boards, social media platforms, messaging channels like Facebook Messenger, and you know, if you have a chatbot, the chatbot now becomes your new application form, collecting all of those information. So that's it's easy for, for, for the recruiters to consume the information from the candidates. We've actually seen a couple of examples of our customers who became uh, very creative with, how they, with, with the way that they do career fairs. So we've seen that you know, instead of the usual career fair in a school or in, you know, in a certain location, they would do virtual career fairs. They would advertise that everything can now be done over the phone, um, and at the obviously at the comforts of the homes of our candidates. And you know, these are things that that this this is the shift that the recruiters needed to do in you know in response to the situation. Now, phone interviewing before the lockdown is all about talking to the candidates for an initial interview and bringing them to, to the site. Most of some, there are some customers who would really want their, their candidates to come on the same day. Um, they would schedule them for the same day um, so that they could process everything within the same day. Um, but now, we've seen that recruiters and teams are trying to shorten the process so that there's, you know, they try to limit the handover between one step to another. Um, maybe it may, might make sense for you and your teams to train some of your recruiters so that they could already do level two screening on top of the initial screening so that you know the process is much shorter than before. Or if you have a facility where you can transfer a call um, to another recruiter for the next step or maybe to operate for operations interview, then that's something that you, know, you can also do to shorten the process um, while you have the candidate on the phone. Because it's different. Before you have the candidate in your office, they're sitting there, they're waiting for the next step. Um, some of them would, you know, would be in your recruitment offices for, say, at least four to six hours just to go through the entire steps. And you have captured them in your office. Um, but now, the chances of getting fallouts through each of the steps is much higher because, you know, you're not, you're not seeing them in person and, you know, it's, it's, everything is being done virtually. So as much as you can, it's important that you're able to shorten the process for them without without you suffering in terms of the quality of the hiring and, and, and the quality of the screening that you needed to do. Um, I like this term. Um, so actually, it was, it was Blanche who, who mentioned this, quarantine. Um, because of you know, the entire setup where you're unable to, to talk to your, to your peers in person, it's very important that you are able to communicate effectively um, despite it being a virtual um, setup. Now, we, there are a lot of tools that you can use in our company. For example, we use, we, we use tools like Zoom, um, Slack, among others, but there's also Google Hangouts, there's Skype, there's Microsoft Teams, there's WebEx, but these tools are, of course, these are at your disposal that will allow you to collaborate between teams uh, more efficiently. Just be very careful, like the, the one on the right, um, be very careful when you have your video on. Obviously, some of us may be like, for example, I'll let you in on a secret. I'm, I'm just like this up here, but down there, it may be something else. But you know, just be very, be very careful 
uh, with 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 you know, when you when you have your video on, um, because you know you don't want you you don't want your teams to be seeing things that they don't need to see. Uh, but but basically, <clears throat> what I'm trying to say here is, the situation is different now. It's important for teams to communicate seamlessly across channels to make sure that everyone is aligned and on the same page. <coughs> Um, in, in our company, we always talk about over-communicating. Now, for some of you, it, you, know, you might think of it in a negative way. Um, but you know, in the absence of face-to-face -face interaction, it's very important to communicate. If you localize that experience in recruitment, that only means you know, trying to log every note as much as you can, um, updating your peers constantly on, you know, on, on the status of a specific candidate. Um, if you're using a CRM like TalkPush or it could be something else, obviously it falls uh, in, under your responsibility to make sure that all of the notes, all of the interview notes that you have with the specific candidate are all there. Um, because when you're in the office, it's easy for you to say, hey, um, hey, Aris, what's, what's the status of this candidate? Did you interview him? Did you like him? Um, but here it's, it's different. Sometimes you would need to, wait for, need to wait for a few minutes before you even get a reply from your peer. So it's really important that you over communicate and document everything as much as you can. Um, and one thing that I would also recommend is, especially for teams. So, so recruitment is a, recruitment as a whole is a process where numbers matter every time um, because obviously it's a numbers game and you know, the conversions from higher sourcing to hiring it's it's a very tough job. Um, I've done that before. Um, so it's important that you know you over communicate. Try to set up routine calls with your team. It might make sense that you have probably a 15 minute start of day huddle on Zoom with the rest of the sourcing team, so that you can get you align yourselves on what what needs to be done um, for the entire day. And then towards the end, obviously at the end of the day, you could already also have a 15 minute huddle just to make sure that you know nothing not, nothing is getting sidetracked or you're not, you're not missing out on your, on your hiring targets. Okay, I'm actually towards the end right now. Um, and so that means we also have plenty of time for Q&A. But the last thing that I'd like to share about is about re-engagement. Um, there's a study, uh, and we will share with you uh, the study, uh, which says that recruiters are able to make 17 times more hires from existing databases compared to their next best sourcing channel, which could be a job board. Um, I'm sure every one of you would agree with me that you're sitting on top of hundreds, if not thousands of candidates in your databases. <clears throat> um, and before the lockdown, and even up to this point, probably your practice is you want to process fresh leads as fast as possible. When someone applies, you want to call them right away. When someone submits an application, you want to pre-screen them or you get a chatbot to pre-screen them so that they could, they could get to the next step as fast as possible. Um, but there's, I think it's about time that you, know, you really take the time to revisit the candidates that are there in your database. It could be in you know, old trackers that you might have. It could be piles of CVs that you just, you know, you, you just didn't touch before. Um, and, and try to re-engage them. Re-engaging might mean you know, putting them into some sort of direct messaging where um, you could talk about your corporate culture, talk about, you know, your job vacancies, and eventually bringing them back to application mode. Um, in TalkPush, for example, we are able to help our customers do this um, by sending messages or re-engagement messages to the candidates that are already there in the database um, and lead them to, for example, lead them to the career site or lead them to their job pages so that someone who is not actively exploring might be interested and then they could easily bring that bring them back to application mode. Um, one of my previous mentors told me that recruiting is not just about hunting new people. It's also about nurturing your existing talent pool. Um, because you know you've built that talent pool over the months, over the years. So they just need the attention that you know that they need and and, and from there you could ultimately convert them and bring them forward. Um, into the next recruitment steps. Uh, so just to recap what we've discussed, we've said that the, ch the, the landscape has changed, the expectations of the candidates has changed, the recruiters need to be able to adapt to that situation. Hiring may be slowing down, 
but actually this is a metaphor that was shared to us by our CEO in our last town hall where he said that now is the time to pull back the bow. What does that mean? <clears throat> your hiring numbers may not be as high as before. It may have slowed down right now because obviously maybe some of your customers or your, your, your customers in your respective organizations, you know, you need people to be working on, on in, in the office or in a lot of factors. So maybe the hiring is, you know, it's, it's slowing down right now. But that doesn't mean that it will not it will not pick up again probably in the next few weeks. So if you, if, if you wanted to make changes, if you wanted to de deploy improvements in your process, actually now is the right time because it's low. I mean, it's very difficult for you to change um, when, you know, when, when you're very engrossed in, in, in the operations of, of a very hectic recruiting cycle. But if things are slow, it's very easy to make those changes. Try to step back and look at what can be improved. Look at those old candidates and databases that I was just discussing earlier. Look at the best practices that other companies are doing and try to start implementing those. Um, and, and, and that would mean that you are getting ready for, you know, for, for the future. You get all of your ducks in a row. Um, and when things get back up, obviously you're ready to come out on top. So, so yeah, that's, you know, that's, that's the entire... Um, that's 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 the entire presentation that I've prepared for everyone. Um, we will now, obviously, we'll move to the Q and A, opening now the floor for questions. What do you think about the new normal? Anyone who wants to share um, anything, any relevant experience that you might want to share, um, let we can go over the questions now. Aris, hmm? if you can, we have a few questions. If you can check the chat. Okay, let's do that. Yes, anything that you guys want to share, I think can go over the virtual job fairs. You want to start, can you see the, <clears throat> can you give an example of the virtual I know Tuti okay. mentioned that the chatbot experience is very helpful. So if you have, if you have stories you want to share, please do. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> So do you want to start, Aris? I think. Yep. First... Um, okay. There's a couple here. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to scroll uh, scroll through the list. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot actually. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. So one question is. Um, okay. Sorry, it's, it's just scrolling back up for some reasons. Um, I think. On top mm -hmm. of the CSR initiatives that companies are implementing, we have uh, suggestions where? on what individual recruiters can do to show candidates that they have empathy. Right, that's, that's a very good question. Thanks for that question. Um, you know, empathy, you know, if, if you try to define what empathy means, it's just you know, trying to relate to a person, trying to connect with the person. Um, my analogy earlier is you don't want to, your recruitment operations to be transactional where um, it could be in simple ways like personalizing messages. There are, there are, there are a couple of, you know, there, maybe you've done this before, like you send a text blast, like, hi. It doesn't even have the name of the person. It's, it says, hi, we're hiring for blah, blah, blah. Uh, would you like to apply? Reply, yes. It's, it's not very personal. It's like, you know, when I'm the one reading that, you would, I would feel that, okay, this is a text blast. It's sent to everyone. I don't feel special. Something, something around that. So that would be one one example of how you could, you know, you could really demonstrate empathy. Um, at the same manner, um, we always we also talked about nurturing our candidates, right? So, so some of them may not be may not be ready for for a job right now because they don't meet the, the qualifications. The way that we communicate rejection is also very important. Um, in 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 one of my previous companies, it's important for us to say it on the phone that someone that didn't qualify for a job instead of just saying please wait for a call from us within the next few days if you didn't get the call that means you didn't make it to the job now that's not very empathic um, instead if you you could you know you could position your message in a way that you're saying um, i'm very sorry you appreciate it you, you, you taking the time to to to, to apply for, for for this job unfortunately the skills doesn't match as of now but we'll keep you in our pipeline and we'll reach out to you if something comes up um, here are some tips on how you could 
improve yourself in terms of soft skills, for example. Um, so that, you know, you're trying to nurture and educate your candidate instead of just saying, no, sorry, you don't need the qualifications. Okay. Um, any more questions? Um, candidates who do not have access to computers, do you have suggestions on what we can do or implement to help support them? That's, that is a, that's a very valid question. Um, well, obviously, it's very important that you make the experience as easy as possible for your, for your candidates. Because obviously, if they don't have means to connect with you, then, then that would only mean that you, know, you won't be able to engage with them. Um, for example, in TalkWorks, one of the things we do is we try to be omnichannel as possible so that if someone doesn't have access to a career site, for example, then they can simply do it on Facebook Messenger. And Facebook Messenger is often um, offered as a free service for most um, providers. And if that's not the case, we can also default to as an, an SMS interaction with the, cost, with the candidate so that the candidate can, um, can, can, can do that over SMS. Um, what else? <clears throat> um, can you give tips on how to help our recruiters who do not have access to laptops and are only using their phones to work? Okay, um, I wish I could give you a laptop so that you could continue working. Um, yeah. that's, probably, that's probably something that you should ask your manager, but, um, but you know, you can be resourceful. Um, I can only talk about but things that we do in Top Push. Or for those recruiters who doesn't have a laptop, doesn't have you know, access to a computer, we also have a mobile app that where recruiters can easily access um, the candidates that are coming into their pipeline and communicate with them, continuing the conversation on the mobile app. You know, even if they're not on their computers, they're able to continue with, 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 with the conversation with the recruiters. <clears throat> okay. Hi, Aris. Considering the new messenger policy, how can we optimize doing follow-ups to candidates and we engage them with a the bot? Any suggestions? If I'm not mistaken, this is Enzo of Concentrics. Um, right. So, yes, that's true. There's a new messenger policy. However, um, we've actually just released um, a feature um, it's more than a week ago where uh, we call it a reheat template. But basically, when you send a message to someone, um, and, and, and this person has been idle for, um, for, for quite a while, um, the, the candidate will receive um, a, a message which says, the recruiter, actually, the recruiter sent you a message, type view, um, type view to, to see the message. So they will still get the message outside of that window, um, but they will just need to do something. And it's a way of, of, of getting them to opt in again to the conversation. And after they've done that and they replied, then you could continue the conversation again with them. Um, one thing that I can also think of Enzo is, I'm not sure if you've gone sponsored messages before. I did, I did mention earlier that, you know, I try to re-engage with existing candidates and you can do that using what I just described a while ago. But probably sponsored messages is also something that you could, um, that you could do where it advertises it. The way it does is it sends a message to those who messaged your Facebook page in the past. Uh, I'm pretty sure that for a company your size, you would have thousands of them. Um, so the, the, in, 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 my, in my experience, the cost, per, the cost per result for sponsored messages is very, very cheap. Like it's, uh, it's around six cents um, per conversation as opposed to running a lead ad, for example. I hope that answers your question. Um, any more questions? <clears throat> um, let me see. Water. I think okay. we have. <clears throat> I'm very sorry. I didn't know. <laughs> um, okay. I'm, I'm very sorry, guys. I was looking at the chat. But apparently, there's a Q&A tab. Very sorry, this is the first time um, that I'm using this. One question is, can you give us a sample of a virtual, virtual workflow? Thank you for that question. Um, the, basically, the idea of a virtual workflow is you are doing everything um, seamlessly despite, despite not having to do it on site. So that means when, when I was talking about trying to shorten the process or transferring the interview or trying to do multiple interviews in one call. 
um, so that it's easy for you to, to get the responses of the candidate without having to call them again. Um, and, and, and virtual workflows also means that you're trying to, um, to make it as easy for, as for the candidates um, to move from one step to another. It might mean moving a candidate from one folder to another on talk push and triggering a certain you know, a series of actions um, that can be automated, for example. So if they are, if the next step after the interview are assessments, then you can automate it in the way that when you move them to the next folder, um, then it sends them a link to the assessment platform instead of you having to do that manually. Um, after assessments, obviously, we can automate it in a way that TalkPush will pull, pull the score of the candidate. And if that candidate actually meets your criteria for, let's say, if the passing score is three out of five, then that person will be moved to a different stage and it will trigger a different set of, a different set of, of actions on the chatbot. Okay. Our ATS, Tuti asked, our ATS is not yet live. Is it possible to enjoy the benefits of talk push, say the chatbot, without an ATS? Um, actually, if you, you know, there are, there are different ways as to how, talk, how users of talk push look at talk push. Some of them will, will look at it as an ATS because if you look at the, you know, the definition of ATS, basically you're trying to, to stage a candidate through the steps in the process. Um, but, but basically, um, if you don't have an ATS and, and, and you want to use Talk Push in terms of managing requisitions, managing the candidate funnel, moving them through steps, um, then you could always use Talk Push first. And then, and then obviously the chatbot is an extension of the CRM so that all candidate facing activities are being done on the chatbot and collected on Talk Push. And once you have the ATS live, then we could easily integrate with any ATS. So any information that's collected on Talk Push can be passed on your ATS so that you know so the information is synced um, between two systems. Um, okay, we have. Do we have so an anonymous attendee asked, um, do we have a trend on candidate response time during the ECQ versus uh, versus before ECQ? Um, I don't have. I specifically don't have the response time metric. Um, we can probably we, we can look at that with our analytics team and we can publish it in our LinkedIn channel. But what I've seen so far um, in terms of candidate activity, they are very, very active um, from, like I said earlier, from as early as 9 a.m. until 11 p.m. The activities are, are very high. Um, how about the duplicate leads? Can we do something about it? Um, yes. Um, it's, it's common behavior for candidates to apply for different jobs. Um, and mainly, may, maybe because you know they feel like if they if, they, if they've applied multiple times, um, they have more chances of getting hired for, for a specific role. Um, and but there there are a lot of ways. That that's one re that's one reason. But sometimes the reason why there are a lot of duplicate candidates is because the workflow that was created for 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 example for that specific candidate journey also needs to be revisited. Maybe you need to combine all of your sourcing channels into just one campaign so that so that we could limit the duplicates um, and for example if someone already applied in your job seat ad and then they reapplied on Facebook um, then then that would be that can be screened because they're all being controlled in one campaign. Um, another 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 thing that you would do you can potentially do is um, um, you, well you can always look at the, the, at the show other applications on um, on talk push so that you would see which one is more recent and if a candidate has been processed for a different role. Um, I cannot speak for our product, but we have discussed this also with our VP of product where we could limit, potentially we could limit the, the duplicates globally across, uh, across all requisitions or across, across job campaigns. Okay. Um, I already answered the question on the new messenger policy. I think I've answered most of the questions, Blanche. Do you have a new one? Are candidates more inclined to stay in their current organization given the current circumstances? Mm -hmm. I have that one. That's, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Maybe I should be asking you that. Um, <laughs> what, what, have you, what have you seen so far? Um, well, personally, um, if I'm speaking just for, for myself, obviously, uh, I would I would stay in my current organization and wait for things to normalize. 
But like I said earlier, candidates are very critical these days. They are, they are very socially aware. If they see that the company that they're working for you know, has not been doing a good job in terms of taking care of their employees um, or probably doing initiatives around corporate social responsibility, then they might think that it's, you know, it's, it's worth looking for opportunities outside of their current employer. Um, but again, it's a number of factors. It could be that, it could be the compensation, it could be the culture, it could be job fit, it could be culture fit. So it's very difficult to define. But personally speaking, I would be more inclined to stay and wait for things to normalize uh, before I even consider doing that, if I were to do that. Okay. That's great, Darius. Do we still have, we still have eight minutes so if you still have questions, uh, just type it there. Otherwise, if you have comments, violent reactions, praises for Iris, we would love that. Um, but thank you so much. So I think, is there anything that you want to say, Iris? Anything um, else? Yes, yes. Um, I, I did say this already earlier. Thank you, everyone. We have... We have 100 participants, more than 100 participants who, who joined this afternoon. We were actually just expecting around 30 or 40, but we're very overwhelmed, yeah. very happy, very thankful that, you know, you really took the time to, to attend. Um, so thank you. We'll be sharing you a copy of the presentation as well as a, a link to the recording. We will be publishing it on our, in our social so you can go back to it. I really hope that this webinar helped you in terms of getting things or ideas that you can easily apply. Um, in your respective teams. If you do, uh, please let us know because we'd be happy to hear that things, things are working for you. There will also be a lot of webinars that are coming in the next few days. Not this week because it's, I know it's Holy Week and this is the last working day for the week, I hope for all. Um, but there would be, we'll be announcing a series of webinars around candidate engagement, how to, you know, around the topic of recruitment in the next few days. So, so please follow our LinkedIn page. We'll also be sending all those announcements on our newsletter. Um, and yeah, um, thank you everyone. Um, we have four days of rest hopefully coming up um, after today. So I hope everyone um, you know, get to spend that quality time with your family, stay at home, stay safe, uh, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next webinar. Mm -hmm. And if you if you have any questions, if you think of something, uh, Iris, maybe you can put your LinkedIn profile. Let's put ours so that they can connect with either of us, and then you can send us a message anytime. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any yep. we, no more questions? Yep. Uh, okay. So I think that's it. Thank you so much, everyone, for attending. Um, we will be. As Iris mentioned, we will be releasing more webinars, so please stay tuned. Um, share, share your thoughts, share whatever you think on LinkedIn. Please tag us, and thank you so much, and have a good day. Stay safe, everyone. Stay indoors. Thank Bye-bye.